blueprinting is the process of truing up the critical surfaces of an action to align them with the center line. This provides for the utmost inaccuracy. Let's take a look. The surfaces we're scoring up are the locking lug recesses where the bolt locks up, the receiver threads, and the face of the receiver. On the bolt, I'm truing up the lug surfaces and the bolt face. I'm using the round portion in the bolt raceway as a reference point. The tools for this job include the PTG action bushings, palleted reamer, palleted tap, bolt lug lapping tool, along with the bolt face truing cutter and guide. Also needed is a receiver action B block, a tap handle, cutting oil, some layout fluid, a lapping compound, and a hand drill. Before beginning any work, the action must be completely stripped and secured in a holding fixture. The first step in the blueprinting process is to use the piloted reamer. This cutting surface cleans the minor diameter of the threads, while this edge squares the receiver locking lug surfaces. Precision ground bushings matched to the inside diameter of the receiver are used to perfectly center the reamer in the action. One bushing is inserted into the rear bridge of the receiver and the other is inserted through the ejection port. Next, I insert the reamer and clamp the assembly vertically in the vise, being sure to check that the pilot floats freely in the bushings. Now I attach the tap handle and apply oil to the cutting surfaces. I'll ream for a couple of turns before removing the reamer and checking my progress. I continue reaming until the leading edge begins to touch the receiver locking lug surfaces. After cleaning away any chips and re-oiling the reamer, I can square the locking lug surfaces. It's important to just clean up the lug surfaces so they're square and smooth. I'm careful not to overcut. Nearly perfect. After cleaning the receiver of any remaining chips, I'm ready to chase out the barrel threads. The piloted tap is used for this process. I insert the tap in the same manner as the reamer. It's important to start the tap by hand to prevent cross-threading. Once the tap's properly engaged, I secure the tap handle, oil the cutting surfaces, and begin chasing out the threads. After a couple of turns, I'll check my progress, then continue. While most taps should be backed out every turn or so, this tool is designed with deep flutes ground to cut only in one direction. Once the resistance on the tap noticeably increases, the threads are completely cut and we're ready to square the receiver face. Leaving the tap in the receiver allows it to function as a mandrel, which I secure in the lathe using a four-jaw chuck along with a live center in the tailstock. After checking for straightness using two dial indicators, I cut the face square to the center line. Now I can secure the receiver back in the V-block and remove the tap. That looks pretty good. Now we're ready to lap the bolt locking lugs. A bolt lug lapping fixture, such as this one by Baker, helps provide rearward pressure on the bolt during the lapping process. To check for initial contact, I'll add a bit of layout fluid to the lugs. Insert the bolt into the receiver and lift and close the bolt handle a few times.
This looks pretty good, about 80% contact. I'll lap the lugs with a bit of 320 grit lapping compound. until it's nearly perfect. Ensuring the lugs have close to 100% contact. The last step in basic blueprinting is squaring the bolt face. Layout fluid is applied to the face so I can monitor my progress. After lightly oiling the threads on the cutter guide, I screw it into the receiver until it's snug. A carbide cutter is then lubricated and inserted in the bolt face just under the extractor. Now I can slide the bolt into the receiver so that the shaft of the cutter slides through the cutter guide. Installing a set screw in a front and one in the rear scope base holes will prevent the bolt from moving. Using a variable speed drill set on low speed, I turn the cutter, pressing it firmly against the bolt face. It only takes five seconds, and we're ready to check our work. That cleaned up nicely. Now we have a blueprinted action. All the critical surfaces are square to the center line of the receiver. Nearly perfect.